Welcome back to another video. We're out here for a little walk on Staten Island in this gorgeous weather, and I am happy to be back posting normal videos. Basically, I've been away for a little bit, having to deal with some family stuff, but while I was gone, I shot a few things, including two different range tests, one with DJI, one with HD Zero. Unlike the last range test we did, this one is not gonna be focused on the actual distance. I really wanna know what the difference is at my local spot between channels one through eight. I'm also gonna throw in there for DJI one more max power run at channel one, just to kind of show you the difference on that same day, same situation, same quad, etc. what the difference is between max power in the case of DJI, it's that 40 hertz mode on goggles 2. It would be similar to the 50 megabits per second mode on goggles V2. While not a scientific test, I really wanted to show the difference between each of the channels in a setting that a lot of us fly often, an office park. This is not so I could figure out what the channel best for my situation was and hog it. I really just wanted to know if, hey, I'm going to an office park and I want to run a lower channel, what is the optimal channel? or at least what's good and what's bad. Because I don't think there really is an optimal channel because every situation is different, every RF environment is different. So without further delay, let's get up in the air and do some flying. I'm gonna switch over to some voiceover and I'm gonna talk you through each of the flights. So let's get into it. And here we go, first flight of the day. We're channel one. I currently set my goggles to the FCC region because I'm here in the US and running the ham file. So I've unlocked the manual mode, all the rest of that stuff. Running 20 megahertz and uh, which is like 25 megabits per second on the goggles V2. And as we turn this first corner, you'll see that in that corner, if I dip low towards the concrete on the turn, I am behind a lot of earth, soil, pavement, etc. So you do see a drop there. But you'll also notice as I pass in front of that building, the wireless access points in that office do affect the signal. So some you'll see the dip right in front of the front of the building uh, quite a bit in some cases. Channel one is mostly okay. It's not too bad, uh, but do pay attention to that in the next couple of flights. You'll see different results depending on the channel. Here we go. We're going down. This one is where I start to see more of a dip. So I'm now basically in the opposite corner and you'll see down here, usually I get into single digits. One performed very well. Uh, usually it sits uh, four-ish, five-ish megabits per second, which in that corner, it does result in a little stuttering, but overall it's still flyable. So you get into trouble, but it's not the end of the world. And you'll see even before I hit the corner, it's already started to recover that bit rate back and I fly home to myself so I can change channel. I haven't mentioned this yet, but I am running the DJI Goggles 2 with stock antennas all around. Nothing special done to it. Um, it is as factory as factory gets. Same power as before, just channel two is up to channel one. As we go up here, you'll see that megabits per second rate as we cross in front of the building, take just the slightest little nip of a dip, but nothing really too big. And then again, as I get low right here, you'll see it dip a little bit more. Nothing big, honestly, you don't even really notice it. The frame rate still perfectly locked it. I think it's like 60 frames per second, I technically is the low latency mode. Oh no, sorry, it's 100, whoops, got that wrong. 100 frames per second and the uh, image overall is clear. This is goggle DVR, so this is pretty much what I'm seeing inside the goggles as I'm flying. Throughout this top level of the garage, I'm basically passing right by myself, right about here. So I would expect the signal to be clear on all channels through this section. I am so close and both the goggles and the quad itself are running omnidirectional antennas, so it should be about as good as it gets. You'll see here I get lost for half a second. This is the only one I take a slightly different route, but I course correct at the bottom of this and get back to the original path. So we cruise down here, hang a left, and you'll see three. So channel two, I get down to three megabits in that corner, and that's where you really start to see a lot of stuttering. It's still flyable, but it's not comfortable. We'll go with that. And I would say 
on channel two at 20 hertz in my spot, you are gonna struggle to really fly. Same goes along here, you'll see it dip down. It does stay at seven and eight and does start to recover a little bit before you hit the end, but it's not the best. Channel two, as you can tell, is not one of my favorite channels when flying here at this office park. Now let's get back to the ground and we're gonna swap up to channel number three. Here we go, channel number three. Cruising out through these trees and here, look at the bit rate. He is already on the ground. There is a Wi-Fi hotspot right there and I'm guessing it's just it coincides with channel three because this by far is the worst front corner I think of all the channels. Obviously I'll make sure of that text on screen if I'm wrong, but here you can see it's back to normal. This building doesn't seem to either have active Wi-Fi hotspots or as uh, strong a coverage or maybe just not the same channel. All the way through this garage section, pretty much locked as near as makes no difference 25 megabits per second I'm not gonna lie I've hit that PVC pipe before it is way more destructive than it looks and it comes out of nowhere and here we go we're starting to see that dip again and here we're already seeing single digits pretty early on it does recover a little bit as I come closer to myself again, but it really never gets into double digits. And here at the bottom, you'll see it temporarily dip into two. And at two megabits per second, it's a lot of stuttering, a lot of blocking, and does not feel comfortable at all. It is flyable-ish. Really not recommended. Honestly, this is one of the few channels that I considered landing and going and physically retrieving the quad. And like the other section of this course, you'll see that the frame rate or the uh, bit rate drops once again pretty sharply as we continue along the back. It does recover once we get out above the garage, but its performance on that back section is not great. Me personally, not a huge fan of channel three either. I've tried flying it before, even before doing this test, and had mixed results, so this kind of continued on to this test. So now we're on channel 4. In that same spot as channel 3, you can see that bitrate does not drop as heavily. We're clear pretty much all the way up until we hit that corner, and then again you see that standard dip as I drop below the concrete level. Yeah, honestly, it's not noticeable in the goggles. With that kind of dip, you don't see a change in the frame rate or the bit rate or really what you're seeing. You just notice that the image isn't quite as clear. All in all, it's not a big deal. Now we cruise up through the garage once again. While we're in this section, my favorite channels at the spot generally have been one, five, and seven. Not 100% sure why 1, 5, and 7 were my go-tos. This may be a holdover for when flying analog or HD0. That may be why those are my preferential channels. Here we go. And you can see once again in the far corner of the garage starting to drop down. We do see single digits when we exit here, but it does not drop as low as channel 2. It recovers a little worse than channel 2 and then down here it holds at 2 megabits per second this I think is probably the worst in that corner which is kind of weird because when we get out into this back section it isn't quite as bad which is why I'm guessing it's a Wi-Fi hotspot in that corner that shares some kind of bandwidth with DJI channel 4 because it starts to recover pretty quick unlike channel 3 in that back corner if I had my choice I would take channel 4 over channel 3 at this spot and now we're back and taking off with channel 5 channel 5 from my past experience has been pretty good it generally is above most of the Wi-Fi signals around here 
And as you can see, as we go in front of this building, really no major drop. As we go along the back and dip low, there is a drop, but it barely goes below 20 megabits per second. And as we get out of this building, the other place where you will see a little bit of a signal drop, it's lock solid. 24, 25 megabits per second. Honestly, it's perfect. This is one of the reasons why I really like channel five at this spot, because it really does give you consistency in most of the places that I fly. As we get back to this back corner, you'll see the frame rate start to drop again, not frame rate, the bit rate start to drop again. As I exit out of the back of the building, you'll see it get down once again, single digits, recovers back into double digits pretty handily. Uh, obviously not really high, but then down at the bottom, gets down to three, but hey, three is not two. <laughs> then we go cruising along the back of this garage, out to the back, and similar to four, actually, in its performance on this back section. Um, this is why I like channel five quite a bit, because it does perform well in both corners, with actually all three corners. Uh, I call each of the buildings a corner, but each of the corners it has decent performance, recovers quick, flying home, and we'll swap to channel number six. Here we go, channel number six. And this was kind of the dark horse for me, because I, for some reason, avoided channel six. I never even considered flying it, and I think it's because I've been around a lot of analog pilots. I am an analog pilot myself, and usually you're either on five or seven. So channel six is not something I even think about. But after this flight, honestly, six is on my radar now. All the way through this to this point, pretty much been locked right around 25 gigabits per second. Silky smooth frame rate, as I would expect, especially in this part where I'm right next to myself. As we get back to this back corner, you see the frame rate start to dip a little bit. And surprisingly, it stays pretty close to double digits in that back corner. I don't think any other channel really has given me this kind of performance in that back corner. And even though it did dip to three temporarily, it didn't feel nearly as chunky or sketchy as any of the other bands up to this point. As we proceed to this back section, you'll see it does rise up, stays in double digits for a while. It does get down to six, but honestly, it didn't feel too bad, and it started to recover very fast at that back corner. So that even in that moment where it started to dip, came right back, good to go. Honestly, channel number six is probably the surprise of this test. I'm definitely considering flying number six more often. Here we go, last channel, number seven, because channel number eight is a public channel and it basically flies like garbage. Would not recommend on DJI ever flying channel eight. Obviously analog and HD zero are completely different beasts. And so there channel eight is a perfectly viable option. For channel seven, it felt like it had very similar performance for me to channel five and channel six all the way throughout the first section of this little course that I set up. It's been locked at 25 megabits per second, except when I dipped a little low at that first corner. As I cruise here back to the back corner, you see the bit rate start to dip ever so slowly and hold very close I think actually this might be the closest to double digits and also recovered up to 16 down here at the bottom. You don't see it even dip to four. It stays up above. And again, this is probably why seven has always been my channel of choice at 20 Hertz in this spot. Honestly, this test really showcased for me why it makes sense. If you're going to have a regular spot that you fly FPV, do this little channel test. Just one day when you're out flying, go up and down your channels, try each one out, do a little course in spots where you fly, 
and maybe you'll find out there's a better channel than any of the others for your specific spot. It's definitely a fun little exercise. And just for a matter of completeness, we're gonna go up channel 140 hertz, AKA 50 megabits per second on the goggles V2, just to see if the results matched the uh, 20 hertz, or sorry, 20 megabits per second mode. Nope, I'm wrong, 20 megahertz, AKA 25 megabits per second. As expected, it's basically locked at 50 all the way through the back section. It has that same little dip in the front corner that I saw with channel one. Little dip there is I went behind the power generator at the bottom corner of the building. I don't know why I was expecting anything different from the higher megabits per second mode, but I did find something a little different. We're not quite sure why this anomaly happened. I actually did fly a couple of more uh, packs and did kind of a similar test. As you see, it gets down to the very low double digits in both of the sections and actually see it dip into the single digits. Uh, almost exactly double the number that you saw on the uh, 20 megahertz, 25 megabits per second mode at the very start of this video. Along the back, again, if you just double the number from that first test, except for right here. Not sure what happened, not sure if somebody started a car, not sure if like my phone rang or I got a text message. Something happened and my video basically dropped to the ground. Uh, I had a little bit of a crash, but still managed to recover video. Just a momentary drop. I did what I normally do, which is disarm. So not really a big deal, but I wasn't expecting to have a crash at the 50 megabits per second mode goes to show you that power, quote unquote power number on the goggles 2 isn't everything. 20 hertz or 20 megahertz can be your best option, which is why I highly recommend at your local spot, try this out. Hopefully your results maybe enlighten you. Maybe they don't. Maybe you already are flying the best channel, but it's worth a fun try. It's pretty easy, pretty quick, and I would highly recommend it. I didn't mention this when the channel dropped all the way down on previous runs, but the reason I mentioned I was gonna go walk and grab the quad is because with DJI, if you do like the punch out, I mean, I guess I can't really punch out because I'm inside a garage, but DJI doesn't recover its video like analog or HD zero. Once it goes away, it needs that two-way handshake, so it doesn't necessarily come back immediately or at all. So it's not like you can, uh, what's the old uh, adage? When in doubt, throttle out. Not the greatest idea when it comes to DJI. It can help it recover, but not always. And there we go. That basically is all of the channels for DJI. I didn't do the different 40 megahertz per, se uh, per second. I didn't include the 40 hertz test because basically they looked absolutely identical on the route that I was flying. And I may go back and try the similar route or maybe try a different route with the different channels on 40 megabits per second, but, or sorry, 50 megabits per second or 40 hertz, but we will see. With all that said, thank you for joining me in today's video. I'm glad to be back and I look forward to a whole bunch more videos coming in the very near future because I have a bunch shot. I just need to get on the editing side of it. So we should be back to the weekly schedule of weekend big videos and weekday freestyle videos. Next week, look forward to me doing basically the exact same test with HD Zero. And on top of that, there's also a little bonus in that HD Zero comparison where I fly with all Omnis versus two patch and two Omni. It's not in an ideal situation, but it does give you a good idea of, hey, roughly what the system looks like. That's pretty much it. <laughs> Thank you all for joining me. As always, links down below for stuff that I fly, stuff that I use. Thank you again for joining me. Catch you in the next one. Bye.